What's up folks, welcome to the best family show ever. I got another RV walkthrough for you today. Specifically, this is a Sunseeker by Forest River. The model is 2450 CD. So it's a E450 chassis with a V10 engine, Ford Triton. So it's had a lot of power, a lot of control, and it's not that long. Um, so it's a bit easier to drive, right? So step on in and I'll show you how to use this thing. What's cool about this one is that there is a built-in railing to help you get in. You pop the door open. You can hang it with this little hook here to make sure um, things don't fly. So you take this hook here, it goes into the little socket, pop it down, door doesn't fly. I'm gonna close the door, take it out, and it's free holding again. This is a very typical setup. Before we go in, you can just hold that for me with your arm. I want to show you the step. When you're driving, it would be like this. But when you want to step in, lift up, and there's your step. So let's step on in. Okay. So normally I take off my shoes, but it's a pretty dry day, so it's not that bad. What you see here is um, the RV in the non-expanded form. This RV does have a slide out, so let me slide this thing out and show you how it looks when it's parked and expanded. If you look at the central panel here, bottom left it says slide out. Cockpit seats must be upright before operating in. Are they upright? Right here, can you come over here? You have to make sure that this seat is not too lean back, otherwise when this thing closes or opens, it can rub against the back and you don't want that, okay? That's what it's telling you. So here we go. There's the button to go out. Here's the button, I push it. You hear a whining noise. This is very standard for all slide outs in every RV. It whines and you stop when you hear a ticking noise. Wait for it, wait for it. It'll happen, it'll happen. Just wait. There, that noise, that ticking noise. Here, I'll do it again. That noise, in any RV, it means stop. In any slide out so, that I've seen so far, okay? So step back in and show the difference between how much space you have to walk around in this RV versus one without a slide out. Mind you, slide outs are great, but a couple of things that they do add, setup time, takedown time. You can't just like drive with this thing out, okay? So you gotta slide it back in and then drive. When you're in a stop and go situation, that could be bad because you wanna be fast. But definitely, um, if you're gonna park and sleep, a slide out's always gonna be better, all right? No disputing that. But like I said, there's a few disadvantages. One is speed, two is weight. These things add a lot of weight to an RV. So it does affect um, the mileage a little bit. But that's minor stuff if you really want to slide out, right? What's cool about this RV is that even with it slid in, in driving form, you can still walk in, use the fridge, use the washroom, use the kitchen without sliding out, okay? There are some that you have to literally slide out to use the back washroom, but this is not one of those. Okay, so here's the central panel for the RV. You have your LPG, liquid propane gas levels. You have your fresh tank levels, your gray levels, your gallery levels, and black tank levels. Right now, they're all zero because I literally just brought it back to deventurize today. Um, this is your water heater. When you put it on, you're gonna have uh, an ignition. I don't want it to, to basically ignite. So there, it's, it's saying that um, there's there's a fault in the tank because there's no water. There's no water, so I don't want to turn it on. This is the water pump. This is the Arctic mode on. So when this is turned on, the tanks in the bottom get heated up and it allows you to use this RV in the winter. I don't normally do that often, but the option is there. You have your slide in, slide out, generator on and off, which doesn't apply for this RV because um, it's a different type of generator in the back. 
a much more quieter, expensive Honda generator. Another panel you want to be aware of is this panel right here. This is like a, a circuit breaker that you normally see in your home. This is off, that is on. So if something trips, for example, someone uses the microwave and blow dryer and puts on a toaster and something trips, you just have to flick it down and back up like a home. So we just closed the door now and you notice that the RV is a little bit darker. So let me show you how to turn on the lights. Over here in the master panel, you have kitchen. You have living room, which is that one right there. You have the bedroom light, which has a switch in the back here. And you have the vanity, which is another light. So now that all the lights are on, um, you also see that the battery level dropped 0.1 for you geeks out there. So let's move on to the kitchen. Let's start with the fridge. It's a standard Dometic gas propane based fridge. Here's the freezer. Here is the fridge. Very standard stuff in RVs. To turn this thing on, to turn this refrigerator on, here's this on and off button right here. To switch it from auto mode and gas mode, there's a button right here. So let's just say if everything was off, this would be it, off. This is how you turn it on. Right now you'll see that auto mode is triggered, so it automatically detects that it's in electricity mode and gas mode doesn't trigger. This one right here you should never touch, but when you do touch it, you're basically forcing this refrigerator in gas mode. And for me, gas mode is great when you're not plugged in. But when you're plugged in, why burn propane? You might as well keep it on auto, so that way it switches to electricity and you don't burn propane. Auto is what you want. A quick note is, before filling gas, what you want to do is hit this off button. Because in all likelihood, this will be running in propane, there will be an open flame in here in this fridge, and because you're at a gas station, you kind of want that to be off. So just click off before you pull into the gas station, and when you exit, click it back on. Not a problem. What you see here is a regular sink faucet, like you see at your home, hot and cold, and that's it. Over here, microwave, stove, oven. The microwave is a standard microwave. One thing to mention is that it has to be plugged in to electricity for this to work, because a microwave is not going to work on battery. Here, you have your fan for cooking, a light to help see your meat or vegetables when you're cooking. And this doesn't have to be plugged in. In here, you have your stove. Here's the stove. To make it work, you just have to turn on the gas and use a, use a uh, lighter to do that. And that's it. Let me show you all three. Here's the stove, boom, boom. There you go, all three will light. Use a lighter like that. So that's how you use the stove, okay? You have your oven. This is a bit more trickier because you have to use a pilot light for this. Okay, so you're gonna hold the pilot light or the pilot setting on, so this is off. Pilot on, hold it. Small group of paint. There. So what I did was I held the pilot light for a minute and then I gave it a light. As you can see, that pilot light right there is on. You want to hold it for another probably like a minute or so until that light is stable. Because you want that flame to be stable. When you let go of this pilot button on the top here, this pilot switch, that light should sustain. If that light turns off the moment I let go, it means that you got to restart the whole process and you let go too early. So let's look at it. It looks pretty uh, good to me, so I'm going to let go. Nope, oh, too early. So that's what I mean by too early. I want to just give you an example of too early. See, so I'm going to let go. Right away, it turned off. So that means the pilot light was not ready yet. I'm going to push it on again. Light it again. See that, that noise? That fluffing noise? That means it's not exactly ready. Let me 
It's good to be. Okay, try now. It's been two minutes. All right, so when I let go of this, the flame shouldn't go off like last time. I'm going to let go. Flame's still on. Perfect. Now I'm going to turn on the oven, okay? So back up a bit. Oven on. And voila, your oven is on. You can cook pizza. And that's how it works, you see? Should I turn it off now? Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn it off because I'm not actually cooking anything right now. That's top, That's maximum. That's off. And that's how I use the oven, baby. One thing that's cool about this RV that's unique in my eyes is this pantry system. If you open this, you see a top closet where you can put stuff. The second one is cool. It's a pantry system with a lock. So right now it's currently locked. When you drive, it's not gonna pop out. But when you're stationary, you pop this lock up, you can slide out this pantry where you can house all your cooking needs. Pretty neat. But remember, when you put it back in and you're about to drive, this has to be locked. If it's not locked, it'll pop out and it's gonna be annoying. Things can fly around, things can break. So it's cool until you don't lock it and drive. So make sure you lock it. The back here is where you sleep. There's a lot of storage if you look here. There's a bit of a, a rack there to hang your clothes. There is a bunch of closet space, drawer space. And because this is an Arctic model, you notice that the blinds are the insulating type blinds. If you were to come back here, it's really hard to do. So I'm gonna show you laying down. You can push it up like this. Huh? Does that work? Yeah. And uh, when you sleep, what you wanna do is bring it down. Not exactly blackout curtains, but it does a pretty good job. This is like super bright daylight and uh, it's blocked up pretty well. Okay, I wanna show you one thing here, which is a thermostat. It's on this side of the bed. Okay, so facing this side of the bed, there's a thermostat. Right now it's on furnace mode. It's not gonna kick in because it's spring. Um, but you can do off, you can do AC, which is up. Up like that, AC's kicking in, right? And here's the thermostat where you can control the temperature. So this is where you control the heat and AC. And that's the bedroom light switch, okay? Now, I'm gonna get up. Let's rotate it around again. I'm gonna show you the vanity area. Washing your hands, brushing your teeth and all that. There's a big drawer here where you can put hand wash, face wash, shavers, things like that. There's a two GFCI plugs here. There's a light switch and the taps for water. You got a little soap holder, a toothbrush holder, and a little hook for a towel. Pretty cool. Now let's head through this door and I'll show you how the washroom works in this RV. Now this is where I'll grab the camera and show you how the toilet works. So right here you have the toilet. You'll see that on this side there is a foot pedal. When you push the foot pedal partially, partially only, it fills the bowl. And right now the water is low pressure because I don't have it all that high. So there you go, bowl is filled, you do your business, and to flush, you push hard and it opens the valve. And that's how you flush. Pretty simple, but if no one explains it to you, it'll be hard to figure out. So basically, partial push. So basically, partial push, fills the water, and the valve opens to flush, okay? You have a light switch. It turns on and off the light. You have curtains for the shower. You have a shower head, and it's just basic on off system like your home. And that is basically the shower. You do have a vent up here that you can turn on um, when, for when you use the washroom. It's the button, like that, all right? All right, folks, so that's the walkthrough for the washroom. It's pretty easy to use, but I want to go through it in detail so that you understand how to use it. Close the door now and walk to the dinette area. You'll see that on top of the dinette, 
their storage. You put things like your laptops, Nintendo Switch, phones, things like that. There's more storage up there too. Here is the dinette area, which fits one, two, three, four people while you're driving or while you're eating. And, and while you're eating, you don't require seatbelts, so you can really squish as many kids as you want in here. But when you're driving, you can only have one, two, three, four people sitting because there's one, two, three, four sets of seatbelts. If you have a child and you got to put him in a child seat, you have to go use the seatbelts, lock it in the back or in the front, and secure them in by buckling these two things, right? Um, when you want to sleep, what you do is you convert this seating area into a bed. So let's do that and I'll show you how. What I do is put these things in every RV, this is what I do. I put these two cushions, some velcro here, <coughs> put them horizontal like this, some more velcro there. this and this once you have the, cu the cushions horizontal you can put this table downwards so this table has a hydraulic system which is different than some other RVs which have a bar I do prefer the bar system but this one has a hydraulic system so here we go look up there is a bar that you have to unlock can you videotape that unlocking, please? I did. Like that? You see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, you see that? Right? And once that's done, you can lower it. Just with pressure. And it goes down. Okay? When it's down, you take these two cushions and you put them in. Like this. So you take this cushion you remove this upper seat right out put it down take this cushion put it over move this cushion aside take this seat lift it up put it down across and voila you have a bed that sleeps a lot of people two really now that now that it's in bed form let's put it back up so the first thing you do, take this side, stab it back into a split spot. Make sure the seat belts are out because you're likely going to be driving afterwards. Take this side, lift it up, put it back in position. Want to make sure none of the seat belts are caught. Take this, make it vertical, make this vertical, this table goes up, and remember, there's a lock, make sure the lock is in place, it's really important, there you go, now it won't go down, take this cushion, shove it back in, take that cushion, shove it back in. Now you're good to go to drive, all right? Um, important to mention is another compartment here to store things. Another compartment to store things. And on this side for the lucky passenger, they get a solo chair that reclines with a seatbelt. They can just sit in a leather chair and chill. Another bonus is that it also rotates. So, like this. You can make it in different directions and enjoy the view as you sit and camp. So this is the best chair in this whole thing. The lucky person gets to sit here. It's never me, because I'm in the driver's seat, which I'll now show you. So head into the driver's seat, okay? Step in, get your feet in there, Recline the seat a little bit further back, but for me, this is a good position. The keys are right here. 
in my jacket. This is a pretty standard car. So key in there. I want to show you this little reverse camera setup we got, okay? Plug it into cigarette lighter. Just turn the engine on. The moment you turn on the lights, the reverse camera will appear because the reverse camera is hooked onto the lights. And there you go. If you look right there, that is how it looks in the back. So I can go and drive forward, drive back, and know exactly how far I am behind me. All right? In this car, everything else is pretty standard. You have your windshield wipers, you have your sprayers, you have your mirror controls right here, on off, the control the side, big mirrors. You have your power windows, unlock and lock. So that's pretty basic, right? Nothing special. You got a cigarette lighter adapter, another one here, spare. You have your normal radio system, which is off right now. Um, this is a slightly upgraded system. You have your regular AC, vents, heat, defrost, right? Pretty basic stuff. What you see there, what you see here is the mirrors, okay? Actually, let's go over that one. What you see there is the mirror. It's important to note that when you drive, you want to look back there, the rear tires as you drive, because um, when you drive RVs, often it's called driving with the rear tires. When you do a turn, you want to make sure you're wide enough so that the rear tires don't run over curbs, don't fall off the mountain cliff, things like that. It's really important to not run over curves and fall over the mountain because your rear tires must make the turn. So make sure that when you turn, you look at your mirrors and you turn wide enough so that they clear whatever you're doing. Apart from that, that's pretty much how the front works. You do have a foot brake. Actually, one thing I want to mention is, see here? There are some cars that the foot brake is pushed down and push down again to pop up, but not this one. This one is you push down and release like so. So down and release. This is the hood release, so don't pull that. You're pulling this one, the one that says brake pedal. Brake release, all right? Okay, in this RV, there is a secondary start. You can push this button and start the RV with the key. So when you push this button, what it does is it links the starter to the secondary rear battery and it allows you to start the car or the engine with the secondary battery. Um, I can't hold the camera and do it so here we go. So if I hold the secondary battery down and start the car and let go, what I essentially just did is use the rear battery to start the engine. You only want to do that during emergencies because uh, it could shock the rear battery if it's not strong enough. And really, if the engine battery is working, why would you not use the engine battery? Okay, so this one is kind of cool. The front is an extended bunk, meaning it's a little bit longer than normal cabin top bunks. So you can have three people sleep this way, straight, vertically, versus normally they, they sleep this way. To get up here, you don't step on this, there is an actual ladder attachment that you put right here. Here's a ladder. You put it here when you drive. You don't really need this uh, bungee cord, but I like the bungee cord because it's a metal ladder. It's nice to have it tied down. Um, you might want to push the driver's side a little bit higher forward, so that way you can pull this ladder out easier. This ladder out. There are two bracket mounts right here. And there are two hooks right here. Simple as hooking it like that. Now you have a ladder. This is how you get up, sleep, and get down. Now let's take a, a bird's eye view of that. And you can see there's a, a single person can sleep on this side, a single person sleeps on that side, and one person sleeps in the middle full mattress. So that concludes the inside tutorial of this RV. We're gonna move on to the outside to show you a couple of things, all right? Let's head on out. If you look here, this one's kind of cool. 
there's two outdoor outlets so if you're outdoor barbecuing and you want to use an electric grill or something like that you can plug it in here if you want to charge your phone plug it in here if you want to um, put on the radio plug it in there this is the water heater you don't got to touch this but so right here is the opening for your hot water tank heater you normally don't touch this but you do touch it when you dewinterize and winterize it's already been dewinterized so I'm not going to show that down here you have a couple of compartments there are keys on them so you're going to need your key to open it up there we go. No, my bad there we go so if you look here I got a portable barbecue and a propane tank quite nice Here's the other compartment. If you look in here, you have a big axe, a tarp, a chair, and an extension cord, along with a, uh, what is this called? A spit? Oh, and there's s'mores. s'mores. And it does go straight through, but the tarp is covering it. You have an LED light right here for light. This one has a EU 3000 IS Honda generator, much better than your normal Onin ones that are super loud. This one's quite quiet. If you turn it on, um, you find that it's much more quiet than the regular Onin generators. We'll get to that later. Right here in the back is your freshwater fill. So when you want to fill up your freshwater tank in this RV for the summer or for a trip, you fill it back here. This compartment here is an add-on. It's part of this rear generator cargo mount that we put on this RV. Open it up, and inside you'll see that we got some firewood, we got lawn chairs, some bungee cords, and some other stuff. You can put whatever you want in here, but that's what I put in here. So to close it, open it up, put it down, and let go. Let's go to this side. Here is the compartment for the electricity wires. Here is the city water connection, which is what I'm using right now. Here is the sewer flush. You use that to flush your, your uh, sewer pipes, but we're not gonna do that today. If you look down here, you'll see the sewer connections. you'll see that this is the black tank valve and that is a gray valve. I can tell because that's a three inch pipe and that's a one and a half inch pipe. So when you do your dumps, what you're gonna do is connect the hose here, put it into the sewer in the bottom. You're gonna pull your black tank first while the gray valve is closed. And when that's done, you push in the black tank, then pull the gray tank. And then when that's done, you push in the gray tank. Put away your hose and you're good to go. I have a video specifically for this dumping process, so go check that out, okay? I'm going to try to cut some of the notes into this video, but if you want a full tutorial, um, check out the link below in the description for that tutorial on how to dump an RV. So getting up, you fill your gas here, and that's pretty much it for this side. Alright, so right, right now you see the RV is plugged into this extension cord right here. I'm going to unplug it plug it into the generator in the back. Okay. Now on to this side. So in this Honda generator, you have an extension cord. You just put it like this, right into one of these plugs when you're camping. That's it. Right now, I'll take it out because you don't want to plug it in while you start the generator. So make it like this. See this panel? This is eco mode. You want it on normally to save some gas. This is the generator off, on and start. And this is the choke, okay? And this is fuel valve off and on, okay? So we're gonna go on, fuel. We're gonna pull the choke out. We're gonna take this key, turn it, this key right here, it's literally a key, put it in. Switch it to on, and then turn this key to the right like you're starting a car. Generator starts. Once it's stabilized, push in the choke. There you go. 
if you want if you want this generator to be more economy, uh, what you can do is put eco throttle on, and this gives it a variable um, throttle, and you'll find that you save a lot more gas. Most of the times, you're gonna put it on eco mode unless you're using something heavy like a microwave or an air conditioning. But yeah, if you look down here, you see a couple of these switches. That is um, just a bunch of fuses, basically. You might trip, and when it trips, you just push them in. That's it. You got a, it's important to note, you got some 20 amp plugs here, and you got a 23.3 amp plug there. So now that it's started, what you do is take the RV plug, plug it into the generator, and now the RV has power. You can even tell because the RV, the, uh, the generator kind of worked a bit harder all of a sudden. That means the RV is drawing power from it. So yeah, that's how you do the generator. Pretty simple, but I wanted to explain it to you guys. Now when everything is uh, ready to be packed up, you just take the off switch, flick it off, unplug it, take this cable, walk over here. Wrap the cable back into the RV like this. You want to do it neatly in a way that it's easy to take out, otherwise you just suffer when you want to unpack it later. So don't cross these cords and just put it in neatly. You need a key to lock this. And that's how you do it. One more thing to note is for this RV, the propane fill is on the passenger side. If you look down, there's the gauge here and the fill here. But you don't normally do this. You basically bring it to the gas station or the propane fill station, and the attendant will help you out. All right, folks, so that's the end of the tutorial on how to use the Sun Seeker by Forest River 2450CD. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. I have other videos that show you how to repair RVs, use RVs. If you enjoy that stuff, check those out. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe so you can see notifications of future things that I do. Until next time, have fun outdoors. Peace out.